Hey, what's up guys, The Relevant Tester, and today we're going to be talking about a build that I think a lot of people are sleeping on. It's an armor on kill build, so just stay tuned and we'll get into it. A few things noteworthy about this build that you will require are one, the Eagle, two, 400k armor at least. Uh, this is a headshot and a weapon damage focused build, so next to no crit chance, next to no critical hit damage. So when I seen the Gunner specialization, I knew that the first thing I'd want to do is put together an armor on kill build. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, thanks to note, Miss Tree are the 10% armor on kill. The med kit that comes in real handy if you're about to die from blowback from your eagle. Uh, which shouldn't happen too much because you're so tanky and you're also getting a lot of armor back on kill. Also, the rate of fire right here is crucial. Uh, just chaining that, there's no cooldown, so chaining that DPS buff is really nice. Uh, a few things that are okay with this build, if you're standing still, you get the uh, weapon handling, which is okay at far distances, not the best. And also the, the ammo here, which is more important than you think, because I find myself uh, running out of ammo a lot if I don't run the specialization. So now that we're taking a look at the build, you can see that I'm using a two-piece battery tough, obviously for the 15% armor on kill. The masks should always have damage to elites as much as you can get for uh, obvious reasons. The backpack uh, just needs to have a lot of armor, total armor, as much as you can get. There's four attributes here, so the pie is going to be uh, uh, divvied out a little bit differently, so it's going to be hard to get those really high rolls. I have 83% left on this total armor, so I could maximize this even more and get even more armor. But what you really want to look for is as much weapon damage and armor as you can get on the backpack. Uh, the only thing I'm really missing out as far as not being able to have talents on the backpack is uh, Harden and maybe uh, damage to elites, but I don't really miss it as much. Uh, the 10% extra damage would be nice, but you don't really need it. Um, and I'd rather have, instead of having 10%, because you have to have two-piece battery tough, so instead of having that 10% damage to elites, I'd rather have, a, say, a glove that I can put precise on and get 15% extra damage. So um, that's just a few things you should note about the uh, mask and the backpack. Also on the gloves, uh, these are really low rolled gloves because they were bought at the vendor. So they're not the best gloves that I could get, but they are, uh, they do have headshot damage from the two piece Arati. Also assault rifle damage, which could be higher, I admit that. And uh, precise for 50%. So in this one piece, I get 25% headshot damage, which is crucial. If I was running Badger Tough uh, gloves and mask, I wouldn't be able to get that. So that is really nice to have. Also on the knee pads, you don't need uh, patience because you're not in cover. This is a face tank build, so you're going to be running hard hitting and as much armor as you can get. Uh, that could probably be total armor, but I got a pretty high armor roll, so I was happy with that. Uh, also on the holster, I got health for a little more sustain, so when I'm out of armor, I'm out of one shot. And also precise for obvious reasons because you're going to be hitting a lot of headshots with this build. And then on the chest piece, you're going to want to have as much armor as you can and as much weapon damage as you can. As you can see, this uh, this chest piece isn't really maxed out the way it should be. I could go for a lot more weapon damage and keep the amount of armor I got, but I just didn't have good RNG. Unstoppable Force makes this build work real well. That stacks really well with your uh, tenacity perk. So, um, all together, you're looking at 32% extra damage on kill from this. Uh, added on to the 35% that you get from Tenacity, so it's quite a bit of damage. Um, all our mods are assault rifle weapon damage, armor damage mods, so yeah, pretty much usual stuff here. Uh, everyone who plays should be uh, familiar with this setup. Also, one important thing about this build that a lot of people don't understand um, is that I use a drone, and I use it for good reason. I'm going to be proccing my Tenacity proc a lot, and when you do that, it cuts the healing that you receive from the uh, Chem Watchers down by 75%. So instead of receiving 100% of my heal, I'm only going to receive 25%, which really makes the Chem Watcher useless for me. And plus, with my uh, playstyle where I'm always running and gunning, I'm never standing still usually. Uh, it really doesn't make sense to use that. What I like to use is this drone. And uh, I'll tell you why because when I pull out the drone, I take 20% less damage uh, just from having my drone out. So the bullets that do get past my drone and aren't blocked are mitigated by. Uh, 
20%, which makes me even tankier. And also helps with blowback from my eagle. So if I'm taking less damage and I say I don't get my third or fourth headshot because someone else killed the AI, I don't really have to worry about blowback because I didn't take that much damage in the first place. Also, in addition to the drone, I use a hive or revive hive on this build. Um, and it's just so that I can be self sufficient. And you don't want to be the guy up in the AI's face and everyone's staying back and you're going down and not being able to get up. And you got to rely on your teammates to get you up. So this just helps me kind of be a little self sufficient. And if I do go down for whatever reason, like a sniper dog or, or you know, some stupid explosion or whatever, then, uh, or just some dumb move that I make because I'm not paying attention, this will help me be self sufficient and revive myself and not have to wait for all my teammates to get the kills because they're staying back and I'm dead up there in the, in the head of the pack. So that's going to be the end of the build part of this video. Um, one thing to note is that this isn't the best DPS build for the raid. The raid's all about damage. Usually red and yellow is going to yield you the most damage. And uh, the way the first raid is set is that damage is key. Um, so this build's more of like a fun open world just solo or even with a team you can do really well and really sh outshine the other players in your team um, it's not a competition but it's nice to put up you know good numbers consistently uh, as far as headshots go and accuracy and uh, kills so it really feels nice to put up those numbers and i uh, really feel like i'm you know shining a little bit as far as you know pickup groups go uh, so i hope you guys enjoyed the build I hope you put it together and try it. You'll have a lot of fun with it. Um, the armor on kill that you get is really neat. And I really like this build a lot as far as open world PvE goes. So thanks again for watching, guys. Here's some video.